Yeah. Yep. Good evening and welcome to Wednesday, October 17, 2018 Town Council regular meeting of the Colonial Beach Town Council. And thank you for uh, bearing with us while we get the town center back in shape so that we can utilize it the way it was uh, meant to be utilized, hopefully sooner than later. As we do in all regular council meetings, if we could just take a moment, stand and, and take a moment of silence and then we'll be followed by the pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the only person absent today is Vice Mayor Dallas Lehman. He had a uh, conference he had to attend. Um, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Mr. Alger? Aye. Mr. Clyburn? Aye. Steve? Aye. Bill? Aye. Phil? Aye. Chair votes aye. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of September 29, 2018 special meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Alger? Aye. Mr. Clyburn? Aye. Mr. Serby? Aye. Bill? Aye. Phil? Aye. Chair votes aye. Thank you. Uh, council announcements. We'll start with Mr. Alger. I'd like to thank everybody that came out there and invited us. I was there as a spectator. We were there helping support. Um, you know, everybody came out. And from what I heard, this is the best year we've had yet. So more attendance, less incidences, and, you know, we're pretty good at that. So that will continue doing this, you know, for the future. Mr. Lieber? Thank you, Mr. Lieber. Steve? All good, thank you. Phil? Yeah, I guess a couple of things. First of all, I guess welcome Mr. Cornwell, our new uh, uh, town attorney. Um, I guess you've been you've been working with us for a while now. I have on, on a special project. On special projects since what February, March, something like something like that. Okay, great. Um, the second thing I'd like to mention is uh, when I left here um, after the last work session. I was convinced that I was going to go home and write a resignation letter, which I did. And after thinking about it, I decided that I would not resign. There's too much to do, and frankly, uh, that would be quitting, and I think there's too many people who would like to see me quit, quite frankly. So I'll let the voters decide that in three weeks. I would like to say, that um, I was considering resigning because I strongly oppose the reinstatement of the town manager because I believe it was contrary to the best interest of our town. I'm also very disappointed and frankly um, astonished, Mr. Mayor, by your focus to reinstate the town manager given all you know. In this instance, I find your leadership and those that followed your direction to be sorely lacking the moral fortitude needed to lead a diverse community. And with that, I'll pass it on. Mr. Rogers. Okay, I just want to reiterate uh, all the people that that worked hard for the success of uh, the bike fest this past weekend. 
uh, I know a lot of people were involved, and I think everything went smoothly. I guess we'll hear from the, from uh, you know, the, the chief how things went, how smoothly things went. But uh, I think I know this is my third or fourth one. It's my third one, and I think I believe I saw more bikes here than I have the previous ones. You know, they were lined up from Colonial to Boundary on both sides of Washington Avenue there. So, but uh, for. Uh, Again, my appreciation, my thanks to all who were involved in making this a success. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Um, I'd also like to echo what the council has said about the bike fest. Um, it seems, at least face value, that it was a huge success. It looks like we've had probably the largest group that we've had in town yet for it. I'd also like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for doing such a great job of getting it ready and uh, getting out ahead of any issues ahead of time and following all the rules and restrictions that were placed upon them by uh, the state police and the ABC. And it was a lot dif more difficult this time than previous uh, bike fest. I'd like to thank our law enforcement family, uh, local police, chief, uh, your folks, state police, sheriff's department, and any other entity that was out there to help us. Uh, fire and EMS always play a big role in this. Uh, the citizens and merchants of the town, outstanding. It was uh, everybody I talked to felt extremely welcome. And uh, again, uh, it looks to me like we didn't have any any issues that uh, precipitated anything that was newsworthy or anything like that. So kudos to everybody that was involved in that. Um, I almost feel compelled to say something, but I'm going to I'll pass on it. Uh, I'll say it at another time. And. Uh, I'll say it loud and clear another time. But presentations, um, first thing I'd like to start with on presentations is the proclamation for Halloween. And we do this every year. And this says, whereas Halloween's trick-or-treating is a long-standing holiday tradition for children and families in the town of Colonial Beach, and whereas the town wishes to ensure a safe and enjoyable Halloween for children, families, and the entire community. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the town council and mayor of the town of Columbia Beach hereby proclaim that the hours between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Wednesday, October 31st, 2018 are hereby de designated as Halloween trick-or-treat hours in the town of Columbia Beach. Be it further proclaimed that we hope all children and their families have a happy and safe Halloween. So just be mindful of those hours after 8 o'clock. Uh, We'll have the police out doing their thing and just asking folks to, to get back home. So that keeps everybody safe. Uh, first on the presentation, um, presentation list is Colonial Beach Schools. Mr. Trivet. Thank you, Mr. Um, I don't have anything tonight. Mr. Turner couldn't be here. I don't know if you have any questions or not. The only thing that I would comment about is um, uh, our parking lot was used that night for the um, concert, and which is totally okay, but it was really dark for people to walk all the way from here down there, and I don't know if you're going to hear any complaints about it, but I just happened to be coming up that road, and there was a lot of people that were walking that I don't think anybody suspected that. Yeah. Um, but we're welcome. Uh, we, we welcome you to use any facility that we have. That's just a really dark way for people to go, and it just uh, I don't know if they were confused about where they were going because because there was no guidance or anything leading them down that way. But just something to think about next year. Uh, I know you got to put cars somewhere, but and we're more than uh, you know willing to accommodate any way we can. We're glad that you're using our facilities. I know you hope it's on a short-term basis, uh, but I hope this is sufficient for you until that occurs, and, um, and we're glad to accommodate you any way we can. Does anybody have any questions uh, for the school? I hope not, because I don't know that I've got any answers, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say it real quick. Thank you for, one, letting us use the school for the meetings, and two, for the, for the bike fest. Um, I'm glad that we had that many cars. We had to utilize it, and we'll consider, I guess, banks of lights next time or something like that. Yeah. But thank you, Tim. Appreciate yeah. it very much. Yeah. Uh, I had one comment on what you were mentioning, Tim. And actually, Rob and I talked about it this past week. Um, you know, we still have the issue with the really 
first street being rather unsafe, like you said, walking up and down, whether it's day or night, because it gets narrow in the ditches. And we had, you know, talked one time, I think last year, about possibly putting a man gate in where we put the utility easement through where that road was, and possibly, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of keep some of the, the student traffic and, and parking traffic, I guess, in the future, off of first street by coming in that back door. And it could be a gate that could be locked and unlocked as needed like the gate has been always along the back here so I really think that that's something we ought to look at again yeah and I mean anything that, that you need we're more than willing to accommodate so we work very closely with, uh, with Mr. Murphy anything he needs you know we're he always works very closely with him he helps us anytime we need anything so uh, one thing that, I, that did just come to mind though I don't know if you're aware of it but those bleachers over there on that field belong to the school and the boosters purchased those and we actually were going to move them this last week but i, I kind of feel like now maybe i should be telling y'all so you don't see them disappear but they do belong to the school uh, i know y'all did some clearing over there on that property uh, so if you see them missing um, unless you've got some reason that we shouldn't take them um, yes sir maybe um with the tennis courts and the potential that the school would actually have a small tennis program It'd be a great place for the parents to sit and watch the kids. Okay. Um, I'll talk to the boosters about that because they, they've actually got it lined up to have them moved already. Uh, so maybe before that happens, uh, they can contact you or, or whoever's in, uh, uh, Mr. Robertson, and, yeah. and, and, and work it out. Because okay. I know there's two sets, uh, uh, but the ones that we have over here, I think, on the visitor side is where they had planned on moving those for the football. Okay. Uh, and they were purchased by the booster, so they were yeah. purchased by the school. You. So they brought that to our attention because I really didn't even have a clue about them and, and you know, never even give it a thought until they, yeah. they asked us if they could move them since they purchased them. But if, if you're going to have two courts, you could almost utilize one for each court. Yeah. Because you could have, you know, uh, a force. We'll see if there's something that can be worked out. Doubles or whatever. Yeah. I'll put we, can, we can give Mr. Slope to contact the booster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Larry, Westmoreland County, Supervisor. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I, too, would like to thank the Police Department, Sheriff's Department, all the state troopers, the ABC that were in uniform and Out plain here. clothes that were walking around and stuff. Uh, I had the pleasure of being help with security, so you know they were dragging bottom of the barrel if I had to come in to help with security. <laughs> but, uh, I found the quietest place behind Frank where there wasn't any action. So, um, but everything went real well from what I understand. It was a great success, no problems that I know of. Um, outstanding, outstanding job. And it was the biggest mm -hmm. this place has seen in a while. As far as the county, the only thing I've, I've got to really report is that um, with Rat County Community College and Carry On Trailer down in Montross, Carry On Trailer wants to expand its production. And the problem they're having is they don't have enough welders and stuff like this. So they've aligned themselves with RCC, who has a welding class, and they're going to extend that to the building in front of where Carry On is. Uh, and they're going to bring in uh, professionals to teach anybody how to weld and stuff and then hopefully they'll go on over to uh, carry on and when they expand which will really help out all of us in the whole county if they can get all that done so that's that's a, a plus always wish it was up this way but that's close to their place so i can't write too much um, other than that it was a short quiet meeting yeah. this month and, and uh, not a whole lot happening um, if you have any questions or if, I, yeah, if anybody here has a question i'll be more than happy to try to answer any questions you might have from the county so the welding classes are for anybody not just the county yeah the welding classes are for anybody they're hearing it for young but i asked and they said no it's for anybody mm -hmm. that's what they told me which was which is great i'm a little too old to be out there welding but uh, Years ago, I think the base pay is like 18 bucks a week. 
Owens, but it's not too many people. Man, it's one of those jobs where it's, the more you do, the more you get paid, mm -hmm. you know, so. Now, is it through care, did, are the contacts made through carry on or through RCC? Yes, that's all been worked out. The state's involved, the state's gonna- The contact with somebody to a follow up on the class, is it through RCC, you carry on, who? RCC, I think it's gonna handle it. Uh, like I said, they got money from the state. We've donated, the county's donated some money so that all of this can get, get moving and hopefully It'll help out the whole area because uh, carry on, if not the largest, is about the second largest employer of the whole county. So we don't want anything to happen to them. Anything else? Thank you all very much. Yes, sir. Uh, one quick thing, and uh, you're going to hate me for this, but uh, several months ago, I promised you. You agreed. I did. We'll to provide us with a breakdown of yep. our taxes. And we're still, Mr. Asabi has worked on that. I have not forgotten it's, this. I'm it's, calling weekly on it. it. The problem is, is that if you don't know, we had some changes made in the finance department of the county, and so as as important as finance is, he's drawn his attention more there. Than me well, <laughs> and what I asked for. So, uh, and now this week he had his hand operated on, so he's home. We're not asking him to write it up. Yeah. Yeah, but he's the one who's uh, holding it up right now. Yeah. So I'm giving the facts a and, and he's got you got an extra penny now to account for according to my taxes. Okay. So, all right. Quinn, can you give an update Thank on you. that from your end? Uh, no, I do not have an update, but I can certainly make a phone I, mean, I thought you had spoken to the county office and they were just basically holding up. Not recently. Okay. Uh, since I think it was a month or two. Since yeah, I, 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 I mean, we're working on it. He's working on it. We are, we are trying to get it together. Okay. He, he says he's more than halfway done, but all this other stuff came up. And I've been after him to hurry up to get this, get this done and get it. And then he'll have it, so all he has to do from now on is update it so that we can present it each year or whatever. So, so how's he been Thank doing you. it? Do what? How's he been doing it, man? <laughs> well, the just down, down. Yeah. They run their formula and it pops out of the you know. Yeah. That formula is yeah. interesting. Okay. All right, have Thank a good you. one. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for your help with Bike Fest, too. Planning Commission, Rob. So, um, Maureen couldn't make it tonight. Her sister um, fell, and so she had to go to Richmond to take care of her sister. Um, the planning commission is updated that we're working on the comp plan update and the capital improvement plan, and the uh, questionnaire responses that you gave, if you gave them, if you didn't, you gave them. But um, those have been evaluated, and our uh, Maureen consolidated them, and we're reviewing them. And also, we are um, excited. We are going to bring in a facility to help us create a strategic plan for prioritizing the 40 items from the comprehensive plan that are still outstanding. So that'll be um, coming up and we'll be scheduling a date for that with this facilitator. So I encourage you to please attend that meeting um, and participate with us as well. And uh, that's what we're working on right now. Any, Any questions? questions for Rob? No? Thank you, Rob. Downtown Colonial Beach. Chamber of Commerce. So, uh, this is going to be kind of chronological. Um, first thing I want to talk about is the Boathouse Marina had its grand reopening and ribbon cutting on the 6th of October. Um, the mayor, the president of the chamber, um, Larry, uh, Boathouse Marina staff, uh, Mary Virginia Stanford, Bill was there. Um, we got tours of the of the marina and the and the floating docks, and we just wish them all congratulations. Um, secondly, the fifth annual bike fest was held October 11th and 14. We believe, as you've heard, that it's the biggest event to date, and we're appreciative of all the support we had, including. And I'm going to name everybody who all did too. The Town of Colonial Beach, Public Works, uh, state, local, and county uh, police officers, uh, the state fire marshal, ABC special agents, the Chamber Board of Directors, Colonial Beach Fire and Rescue, the Bike Fest Committee, 
the bike fest, I mean, the Colonial Beach Town Council, uh, Colonial Beach businesses, our vendors, hundreds of volunteers, and our amazing bike fest attendees who had a great time while keeping everybody safe. We've heard many good things about the event, and we've heard several helpful suggestions for how to go forward. And we, hope we welcome those suggestions as well. So thank you very much. Any estimates on numbers? Any I, estimates on the numbers? I haven't heard. Last year, um, we estimated about 20,000, and I'm hearing that it's more this year. I've heard the number 25 thrown out, but um, nothing more than that. Uh, during Bike Fest on Friday, the 12th, uh, was the um, second annual um, or second week art walk and the chambers displaying the magnificent photography of Bobby Hooker of Hooker Studios right here in Colonial Beach. And his selection at the chamber includes Bike Fest art and art from the town and it, he calls it his colorful art. And so please stop by any time and come see the art there. Uh, the Chamber's hosting a volunteer appreciation event this Sunday, the 21st. This event is new for the Chamber and its sole purpose is to honor all of our hardworking volunteers. It will include a delicious meal, libations, music, and karaoke. Uh, I'll be attending the Northern Neck Commission Tourism Commission meeting next Monday, the 22nd. The meeting is going to include a tour of Ditchley Cider uh, Works in Kilmarnock, Virginia. The Fall Festival Committee is working hard to bring you a wonderful event on the 27th from 11 in the morning till 6.30 in the evening. There will be pony and hay rides, bounce houses, scarecrow building, craft tables, fun zone, costume contests with prizes. New this year will be Trunk or Treat and the 16th Annual Golf Cart Parade. Uh, thanks again to the Foundation for your support and your sponsorship of this event. Uh, the Colonial Beach Chamber of Commerce is partnering with the Still Hot to Trot chapter of the Old People's Riding Club to bring you the Colonial Beach Urban Trail Ride on October 28th starting at 1 o'clock. Horses and their riders will prance down the boardwalk and along the Potomac River and Monroe Bay, giving the riders the opportunity to see the spectacular sights of our town and spectators to see the beautiful horses and their riders who might just be decked out in Halloween garb. Certainly not a sight to be missed, and this event is a fundraiser for the fire department. Uh, the Colonial Beach is partnering with the or the Colonial Beach Chamber of Commerce is partnering with the Colonial Beach Foundation to hold the candidates forum in advance of the elections on November 6th. The forum will be held on the 29th. We're working out final details of the location. Uh, you can please email cbfoundation2018 at gmail or info at colonialbeach.org with questions that you'd like the candidates to answer. You will also have the opportunity to submit um, questions that evening. Uh, our next chamber social networking event will take place at the plaza on the evening of November 5th and additional information will be disseminated to members prior to that event. Uh, the chamber will also sponsor the Colonial Beach Fall Rockfish Tournament on November 9th through 11th. It's a two-day fishing event with prizes ranging from trophies to $5,000 for first place. Applications can be found on the chamber website at www.colonialbeach.org. Um, I will be out of the office from November 8th through December 1st visiting my daughter in Germany, so I'm going to miss the t next town council meeting. Um, and always the chamber would like to thank the town council for your continued support. Any questions? Be kind. Thank you, Susan. Thank Thanks you. for everything. Awesome job. Uh, Pete, Colonial Beach Foundation. Good evening. Uh, well, she stole part of my thunder <laughs> with the candidates forum, but uh, let me just clarify. Um, you, you probably all of you have been to attendance forum in the in the past, and we do solicit questions that uh, that citizens want to ask the candidates. Questions that are written and and received prior to that evening get priority over the questions that are submitted uh, during the evening. Um, 
as soon as he gave you uh, uh, two contact points or three contact points that you can submit questions for. And we, we look forward to uh, working in conjunction with the, uh, once again, with the Chamber of Commerce because that's worked out very well. The second thing I want to bring to your attention is uh, the Foundation is pleased uh, to host once again the uh, Columbia Beach Players at the Community Center who are, will be presenting their second production uh, following their, their rave reviews on the first one. And uh, the first production is November 30th. The last production that they'll present is uh, December 16th. And mostly, as you know, uh, that's, this is a weekend affair. So I encourage you to, to uh, get in touch with Bob Christensen, who I believe is here, and uh, for further details on that. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks, Pete. Next uh, is item eight, monthly department reports. And we'll start with, I guess, the Please, Mark. Yeah, they're in the back. Good evening, Council. Um, I didn't know we wouldn't have the overhead. Uh, it's okay. Everybody has this. Yeah, you should be. This is obviously a, a snapshot for the month of September. Um, the biggest significant activity we had for September was obviously bike test preparation, meetings, coordination, site surveys, and, and, and everything that went with that went along with that. And also on the, on the front page, uh, current ongoing investigations for the month, um, they're, they're self-explanatory. Uh, page two, if you look on page two, um, this, is, this is a snapshot of some of our calls for service uh, that were predominantly uh, criminal in nature uh, that resulted in, in some arrests. Also including, um, also for the month, we had a total of 453 calls for service, uh, total for the month of September. Uh, we issued 13 uh, uniform summonses, traffic tickets, and we had a page. And we had a total of 13 adult arrests, um, which the offenses uh, were predominantly aggravated assault, simple assault, destruction of property, drug violations, uh, DUI, driving under the influence and also uh, drunk in public. And um, I know there was comments about the bike fest. Um, definitely appreciate all your comments. Uh, as far as law enforcement is concerned, I can speak for all the agencies. Operationally, everything went very well for us. Uh, we had very, very few minor incidents that resulted in town. Obviously, we had a, we had a pretty good size force this year. Um, and we, we did have a we did have a pretty large OMG one percent presence in town, and everybody behaved themselves, and I know we certainly appreciated that. So, uh, anybody have any questions? Or? Thank you again. I just want to reiterate thanks again for putting together a really good uh, yes, security program for that event. Yes, sir. Could have gone could have gone another way, but you guys were obviously on top of it. Thanks again. Make sure you tell your officers. Thank you. Uh, next is planning and community development. That's Mr. Chairman, Mr. Council, uh, we continue to have a very busy development season, and um, uh, very recent change in task responsibilities. Um, it's allowing a quicker response time. Um, and so I think that that will make the builders and the citizens extremely, um, extremely happy with the town. Um, we do have there's some highlights such as the site plan review for the Tory Smith project, and uh, McDonald's is also a site plan review. They're going to do uh, a major change to the exterior and the interior of the building, and um, so that's. Uh, we just keep moving along yeah. with 
with uh, this, this busy season. And um, I think that once the, the, uh, the season has slowed down a little bit, you will see uh, some of the backlog of the, uh, the projects that the Planning Commission has uh, requested the, the ordinance amendments as well as, um, as other things moving forward to town council. Thank you. Any questions, Brown? I'd just like to make a comment. Um, you know, Allison's been getting a lot of grief from builders and, and individuals and so forth that because she's enforcing the code as it's written. And I just ask that all the council members, you know, a lot of people have been trying to go around the building department and the zoning department directly to the council members to get things through and right now this is the first time probably since Chuck Bird left that we were actually are, are uh, put, you know, using the, the ordinance in the manner it's supposed to be used and we need to support them instead of letting them let people go around you know our, our uh, staff to us and, and trying to do favors and so forth we've got to stay in line with that so I'd just like to bring that up thank you Thank you, Steve. Yeah, I, I would, if I could, just uh, request that if you could make the font a little bigger next time, that would be very helpful. And a number, the second thing is, and I, I know this is, uh, this is not, uh, you know, firm empirical data, but I mean, I hear from two builders that they can go in the county and get a building permit in like two days for work to be done, and they come here and it takes over a week. Have you heard that as well? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, is, are we to infer from that that the county's not doing their job, and you are, given what Mr. Serby just said? I mean, I, I, why did it take them two days and well, you know, I, I over a week? I said it take two days. I've never gotten one in two days unless it was something that didn't have a site plan review on it. Well, um, I, I'm just telling you what I told you. I'm just telling you what I, I think a lot of people are. And I'm, I'm not arguing and, with you. Uh, but I think a lot of people are throwing accusations at us because we've got new people in there and they're trying to hold the line. And uh, they're upset with our staff. Well, I think a lot of the, maybe a lot of the debate would go about go away if we if we understood on the report what your cycle times are like when you receive the request and when you approve approve the request and that's data that you already have you know when you received it you know when you approved it so we would essentially establish a, um, a cycle time for approving permits and then we could publish that we could say you know look it takes us X amount of administrative lead time to approve a, a permit of this type or of this type. Just something to think about going forward. Um, so you have the data. So it would be something that I think uh, the town would find very useful. I know our builders would. But they could count on submitting it at one time and receiving it three or four days later, whatever, it, whatever your lead time would be. Tell them to go up to Northern Virginia and down to Richmond and try and get one in a week. Big difference. Try and get one in 30 big, days. Yeah. Big difference. This is well, it's Northern Virginia. The staff. It's the staff involved in the Numbers matter. But, uh, I mean, I don't think you can ask for any faster than a week. Um, so I, I'd like to say thank you. And I know that you're a master planner. I know with that comes a level of professionalism. And I understand that. You don't want to steer away from that, and I appreciate that. And uh, you know, sometimes some change it, it takes a little bit of time to figure everything out. And, and I think they'll figure it out, and I think you'll figure it out, and I think we'll figure it out, and uh, we'll all have a better understanding. And I'm sure there's no one fit-all solution to to uh, producing permits uh, and such. Um, but uh, I know that you're busy, I know that you're shorthanded, and I uh, appreciate everything you're doing. Thank you. And we, and we do have some things, hopefully, like you said, when you get caught up. We've got some ordinances that we really need to look at that are, unfortunately, they're on the books, so we have no choice but to enforce them right now. But they're very contradictory to the norm, and so there's various things that we need to look at that, that I'm sure would be pleasing <laughs> uh, to the to the builders and so forth. But unfortunately, right now it is on our books and in our ordinances, and we have no choice but to enforce it. Well, I, I would say that Allison, those are the types of things we'd appreciate if you bring that to our attention. 
because we can take action on them and we'll take action on them. The problem is we've got to have the, the replacement written in order to take the first one out, and that's where we're we kind of slowed down right now is trying to keep can't up. can't have the replacement written until you know what you're going to replace. Well, I think if we're creating a list, I guess, okay. at one point, you some of the issues that we need oh. to address. Okay. Eager to see the list. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you for your continued support, and I will be bringing you some some issues that I think should should be addressed. In but the other thing, make sure you realize, is that the planning commission's got to deal with a lot of these Thank issues you. first. We've got to follow the right process. Thank you. Thank you. Very brief. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor and Captain, uh, you'll notice that there's one page, uh, and uh, I apologize, but typically I uh, spend a significant amount of my time putting these charts together. Um, unfortunately, my, my time has been, uh, been moved in many directions in the past few weeks. Um, of course, we have, uh, there are some updates on that sheet and those major projects that are going on. Um, so, so really we're looking at the first rate grade issue. And, and if you have any questions in relation to this, I can expand uh, somewhat upon them. Uh, I've noticed Tory Smith Rec Center was added at the bottom uh, because we've been working on, uh, diligently working on the, the design, finalizing design, and then getting it out, out to IFC. And uh, actually it is closed today uh, for opening tomorrow. Did we get a budget yet? Pardon? Did we get a budget from Jeff yet? Not at this time. Going to utilize, going to utilize, uh, of course, the bids for that portion. <laughs> and, and, then, and then we'll go with, uh, with uh, the additional items that are, that are remaining that need to be done. Uh, which would be the, the uh, playground and, and also the uh, bid. Uh, as you know, though, also the, the, uh, you know, we've been tied up on uh, hurricane preparedness over the past few weeks, um, and, you know, and, and actually uh, other storms that we've had. So, you know, just to let you know, that some time has been, has been uh, allotted towards that. Also, we have the mold remediation, which is a, a big item. Uh, the, the agreement has uh, has been made with uh, First Gulf. Uh, they, are, they tend to commence work on Monday with a, with a eight day time frame. That's eight working days is what we're allowed. Were we able to submit any fund requests um, for the hurricane preparedness back to the state? And, and no, we have not been able to submit, and it does not look like that we are that it was declared an emergency, at least at this time. We have them isolated, the expenses isolated, in the instance that we are able to receive some from the state. Okay. Um, I've heard of nothing at this point. I don't know if we've served anything. anything can else. you can you reach out? I sure will. ASAP, so we can see what we can do with that. Yeah. There might be something out I'll there. I'll start with the, with the probably Bill C. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And then check with the VML and see if, if they know anything. Well, okay. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, I got a couple of questions. If you could, in the future, put this on landscape and blow it up a little bit. I'll, I'll also get some new reading glasses. Um, and also, is, and, and it may be here. Is there any update on the north end, the, the walk around there at the uh, the VDOT grant? On the north end of the north end of the boardwalk, where we had the the walk around. What's the status of that? The status is that it, at this point there are there have been no monies identified even in the VDOT grant at this at this time. Now it would have to go into our into the five year plan, but I know the money identified. At this time. Well, wait a minute. There was funding available that we didn't. I'm talking about, about the plaza at the end. Yeah. 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 I'm not talking about cleaning up the end of the boardwalk. I'm talking about the walk around at the end there. Yes, there is a colonial is an update. We, we have just uh, approved the 30 percent plans, and it's moving forward towards the 95 uh, percent for completion over the next 30 days, uh, and then uh, we have to. I have recently had communication. 
this week, yesterday, as a matter of fact, with the, and, and also today with, with VMRC relating the, to the application for, for the stormwater permit. The intention right now is to hook to existing um, with uh, so the stormwater permit was in application format with VMRC. So, so we are going to reapply when we reach the 95% for any stormwater permit may be required. Has there been any change in funding available from VDOT? No, nothing from VDOT. The, the, the amount is still the same. What was that, about five? What was that 500? 500. 500. And our estimate is it well below 500? So ten, far. So far. So far. Um, they, they are the Kimberly Horn in this first phase of the 95%. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll be identifying the engineer's calls. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, on the VMRC permit, we're using existing outfall, so what are we doing, applying for additional capacity? Is that what it is? No, the, no, the original had a VMRC permit, and that was because it, it had application correction. And that was because they were altering, in order to get around the, altering the range to get around the structures that were planned in the beach area okay. that has since been, been removed from the project. Oh, okay. DHCD is still on board? DHCD is still on board. I have had a discussion with, uh, with Jerry Davis. Um, all of their extension has been uploaded and their reports have been uploaded to the CAMS portal. Um, okay. With Jerry Davis, and that was yesterday that we had the discussion um, and, and uh, utilizing that time in a conference call that's our monthly meeting. Um, so he is, he is on board. We are trying to keep him abreast of the movement. Thank you, Anthony. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cornwell, would you like to formally introduce yourself and give just a brief background? I, I don't know if you're prepared to do that. Um, but I uh, asked for personnel to do that, but I'll be happy to do it to the public. Um, my, my name is Jim Cornwell. He's Can you come over? Here you go. Let's see. You want to use this one? Okay. Okay. Tap on, see if it works. Yes. 
seven that we now ended up between uh, seven lots of social services, and um, we did a lot of uh, calling work, uh, activity work, and kind of talent work. Uh, so I was, this is my training. Uh, I'm more than going to do um, personal injury, I'm more than going to do criminal work, and I'm going to do work with government work. So far, we were enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, on to uh, old business, item nine, uh, resolution forty four eighteen, tab A. Resolution 4418 uh, amends Resolution 4318, whereas uh, that on October 6, 2018, the Town Council work session, the Town Council authorized Rob Murphy, Director of Public Works and Deputy Town Manager, to proceed with road mold remediation efforts at the library and the town center in the amount not to exceed $60,000. Uh, now, you now therefore be it resolved that all amounts expended under 60,000 for remediation efforts at the library and town center can be funded through line item 4-100-0121005836. Is there a motion to approve that? Is there a second? Second. And discussion, Mr. Alger? Any discussion, Mr. Library? Steve? Yeah, I was just wondering uh, what line items we ended up. This is the line item we moved funds to to fund it. So what were we able to determine to pull it from, Phil? I think Phil can speak best on that. Well, in, let's see. Let me get the... There's an account. Uh, there was a contingency fund, town manager contingency fund. There'd be twenty-seven thousand dollars that'll come out of that account, and there was a, an account under public works, weather emergencies. There was twenty-nine thousand five hundred in that. We'll be taking twenty thousand out of that account, and we set up a new account titled mode remediation. So that's forty-seven thousand dollars will be in that account. That uh, the expenditures will be run through that. The expenses will be run through that account. So this line, so this line item is mold remediation entitled. That's not the account number. I think we'll get the account number. I, I was asking if we had it tonight, but this isn't the account number. What's this? What is it? So that account funded. number is the. Uh, Contingency fund. Yeah. So that's where that part of it's coming. So, so, yeah, so we need to write. Well, that's not right. This, in, this isn't right. right. 27,000 will come out of that, and 20,000 will come out of uh, uh, the weather emergencies account. We need to amend yeah, this. This is wrong. wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It is wrong. Yep. All right, so we need to make an amendment to the resolution right. to state that it, the uh, remaining amount, or that it will be split. Uh, Forty-seven thousand. What's the other part? Twenty thousand. It's going to be twenty twenty-seven thousand out of the uh, contingency fund, town manager contingency fund, and twenty thousand out of weather emergencies account that will go into a new account titled Row Mold Remediation. Well, if we got the bids locked in now at forty-seven, why are we still carrying sixty? There. There is contingency on the on the item if they find additional. So that would all come back to us as a as a change order if it were necessary. Do we have that's open they go into the walls if they find it? Right, no, I understand that, which we can probably expect. Um, so right now we're not anticipating funding a contingency whatsoever. Or do we have an area where we think we're gonna grab it if we need it? Yeah. 
Well, if additional funds are needed, they'll come out of the, uh, the town manager contingency. Okay. So there is additional funds. Yeah. Available. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. So the so the new uh, resolution would read then that uh, now therefore resolve that twenty seven thousand dollars will come from the town manager's contingency fund and twenty thousand will come from the weather emergency account. Yes. Okay. And to uh, to complete mold remediation at the library and town center. And it'll go into the account titled mold remediation. Okay. Question, if we end up going over and have a change order, we're going to have to come in here and do a special meeting to appropriate those funds before they can move forward? I think additional funds will have to be. That's a problem because we got an eight-day window. Yeah. We need to That's set right. contingency funds aside, I'm afraid. That's... Twenty thousand that's coming out of the, you know, that that was actually an operating fund within buildings and grounds. We may or may not need a, you know, and the the twenty thousand. Hopefully, I thought the forty-seven was our our quote though. Yeah. Right. All right, so right now all we have done is funded the quote. We have not funded any contingency. Right. And the problem is, is in this process, you've got to give them approval as they're doing the work. We can't stop, have a special meeting, appropriate more money. We need to set contingency funds now. Yep. That's what they've done, but they haven't funded it. That's my point. Yeah, we haven't funded it. But we have to, right? I mean, right now we said 60, but now we're saying 47. So we gotta, we really gotta set some contingency funds aside yep. in this resolution. Or just. I thought we were. I thought it was going to be. What was the 60 was that? But if you're breaking it down by account, then it's a. You, yeah. Did you change it to those two accounts or not? If we leave I the accounts it, out. I think, I think it good. should. I think it should just read sixty thousand. I agree. I agree. And if we don't use sixty thousand dollars, we don't use it. But we know, for face value, there's, these two accounts will be drawn from first up to yep. forty-seven thousand dollars. Yep. So do you? Can That's you put fine. that in some kind of. You want to read it back? To Jim, are you okay? With right. the we don't need to reappropriate or come back for anything, right? As long as we identify the 60. Let me read it again real quick. It says, now therefore resolve that all amounts expended under $60,000 for mediation efforts at the library and town center be funded through line item 4, 100, and it goes on. But as long as we are under $60,000, do we need to identify which two? Well, you got it. Again, yeah. I want to know. You've got two funds that you're going to take, transfer the money out of and put it into a separate fund. Right. Yeah. But, uh, the mold remediation fund. Right. right. So if you transfer whatever amount, the total $60,000, that would be your resolution. Right. right. 20, 30 out of 130 out of whatever math okay. comes out, you get 60. Now, so. if 60 is not used, then it'll later count to be Okay. Back. Yeah. Back. So we can we can transfer the twenty seven or forty seven thousand out of. Uh, the Do we have to label the amounts we're taking? Can we just say these are the two funds that the cost that the funds are coming from? These are the two accounts or line items the funds are coming from. That way we've got a maximum of sixty thousand and it's coming out of two accounts. Period. Would that work? Okay. Yeah. If there's that much money in those two accounts, is there? Yeah. Okay, so all we got to do is just those two accounts. Yeah, there's, yeah, I think there's more, more than enough money. Yeah. Okay, so we're back to square one then, right? We're just going to go with the original, we're going to identify $60,000. We have the wrong account numbers. Okay, all right, well, well, we'll just, we'll carry with the new resolution that says that the money's coming from the town manager's contingency fund, um, and uh, the, the uh, emergency weather account. Do I have no amounts? No amounts. Just the funds. That's where it's coming from. That's right. Correct. All right. Okay. So, is there a motion to approve the amendment? Mr. Alger. Aye. Mr. Oliver. Steve. Aye. Bill. Aye. Bill. Aye. Chair votes aye. Okay. Now, uh, back to the resolution. Uh, is there a motion to approve the resolution? As it's amended. Okay. okay. Any questions? Any? Okay. Mr. Alger. Aye. Mr. Lyman. Aye. Mr. Survey. Aye. Phil. Aye. Phil. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Thank you. Okay. Is there an opening date in the library?
as soon as, soon as possible. We're trying to get it for the before the election. So that people, that yeah. Yeah. Work starts Monday and count eight days. Yeah. Oh, it starts on Monday. Yes, it starts Monday. Yeah. It's just trying. We're moving as quick as we can on that. Okay. And eight working days. Okay. Thank you. And let's hope nothing happens. Right. No new business. I see. Uh, citizen input. Can we do new business? Huh? New business? No new business. I was going to make it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Just on a new business, I just, I'm sure everybody, we've made no comment really. Uh, Frank Alger and I are working on a, um, a program uh, of enhancing um, communications and so forth down at, with staff and with the town manager or with the council and so forth. Uh, it's ongoing. We, we don't have a lot to tell everybody right now. Um, but and nor do we have a lot to tell the council yet as far as results per se. Um, but I want to tell you that we're spending a lot of time. Um, I've sat down and spoken to almost every staff member in town. Um, and we're, we're just, you know, Eddie worded it very well in his memo. We're, we're trying to enhance here, you know, and uh, so we're really taking a very positive approach and look at things and, and, and looking at all of our roles and interaction uh, to make sure that we're all interacting and communicating so forth properly and and not putting undue pressure in the wrong places or what have you. So there will be more forthcoming. I know everybody wants answers immediately and so forth. We just, we don't have them yet. And uh, like I said, I was in meetings for three days with everybody, and but we are working on it. Frank and I are meeting again tomorrow. So uh, please bear with us. And I know it upset some people, but it was very important to us to make sure that we informed the staff what was going on first. And I know everybody was upset that the public wasn't the first one to hear. Of course, the newspaper got the news before any of us got it, so I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, though. Thanks, Steve. Uh, citizen input, Mr. Kennedy?
and town manager Robertson. We have somebody with some local ties, just as uh, with our superintendent of public works with Rob, local ties, and we're fortunate to have people like that. And for those of you that did vote for the reinstatement, I think it was a great move for the town. It was a great move for a very nice man with a lot of abilities. Uh, Colonial Beach has a chance to advance and finally become the best it can be under proper leadership. If you keep changing everything, it's just like the Redskins. You can keep firing coaches, but if you don't have continuity with people that have ability, you're going to start over every time. And again, I've been in your shoes. Oversight is very important. But please consider for the betterment of the whole town, when we hire people, you've got to check behind them some. But please leave personal things out of it. Please let them do their job. Please don't micromanage. And please share information before a public meeting. It, it, looks, it gives the appearance of really politicking when things just come to a meeting, and it, it's kind of like a little sideshow. But I will say that was a very professional meeting with a couple of exceptions. We did have a couple of guys that disagreed, and I'm going to tell you that wasn't the first time something has been re-voted on in Colonial Beach, and it will not be the last. Uh, we had a couple of guys that left, and they did come back. Uh, also, as I was getting ready to leave, I was going to speak to somebody, and one of the council members uh, approached me, and almost got nose to nose, and uh, thank goodness I'm older and I'm not in good shape, and I just kind of laughed at it. But he used profanity to me. It was unsolicited, it was uncalled for, it was unprofessional. And that's just not the way you conduct yourself if, if you're representing the town. So I would say that I think there's a lot of possibility if we can get you guys to share information with one another and cooperate and, and work for the town. Don't work for a, a special person or a special group or a special interest. Let's put Colonial Beach first. Let's get it out there where it needs to be. And uh, I'll end on that part of it. I do appreciate your support and I support you. And uh, one thing I would throw out, there was a, a lawsuit against the town, I believe it was in the 80s, when the uh, yacht club was sold to the Schick family. And there was a lawsuit then, and all those names became public knowledge. And, and they weren't made public so people could ostracize them. But I'm hoping uh, either the lawsuit will be dropped or the names will be made public. I mean, if somebody believes that firmly against it, then they should be willing to share their names. But I appreciate your time, and I, I commend all of you for not having an easy job up there. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, item 12 is a closed meeting. Uh, there's a motion to go into closed meeting to discuss personnel pursuant to section 2.2-3711A1 to discuss dip disposition of real property pursuant to section 2.2-3711A3 and to discuss pending litigation pursuant to section 2.2-3711A7. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Second. Mr. Alger? Are we going to discuss this? I, I, have a, I have an item I'd like to discuss about this, if I can. We're going to go in closed session? No, before we go into closed session, about the motion. I don't believe the motion is sufficient as written. I'm going to clarify what you mean, opportunity. Okay, this is that opportunity. For the personnel matter that relates to a specific employee uh, or appointee of um, this council. Uh, and actually, it was my request uh, to talk about me. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't know if the council has any other personnel matters they want to talk about, but I, I did not know that you were going to ask me to introduce myself to the public. Yeah. I just wanted to introduce myself to council. Yeah. That's what I asked the personnel. Right, so that was what, okay. That, that's what the personnel did. The other issue involves a specific cost of real estate, uh, which is the uh, the park property and the litigation about the other property. Yeah, Jim, so, and so we do 
we should put the specific topic in these resolutions going forward. If, if, it's, if it's a personnel matter, you do not have to list a specific person. Okay. Right. And um, if it's litigation or a um, issue involving um, um, property, that's really within the discretion of myself and the town manager because it, it, obviously if we're going to talk about selling X piece of property, we may not want that to be known. Or if there's a suit that's not been filed, exactly. but that may be yeah. coming up. Gotcha. litigation, okay. set up a discussion, and so forth like that. No, we do not have to specifically say, all we have to do is give, give enough information so that there's knowledge of what it's talking about. In this case, I don't mind telling you personnel with me, the uh, suit is the one that's been brought on the park property, and the real estate is the park property. Now, that was what I requested. I don't know if you have. That's it. That's it. Right. There's no other requests. I think there was. We had intended briefing you guys a little bit. You know, issues that I mentioned earlier. Oh, okay, yeah, you want to, okay. I mean, so there is another issue, personnel issue, that will be being discussed. I just want to make sure it's clear when we're doing this right. I, okay. I, I was, last time I tried to go into a closed session, it was during a, a we called a special meeting, and I essentially went and copied this similar site, and I was told, <laughs> By the attorney at that time that no you can't you can't do that you have to have three pieces to making a motion to go into closed session purpose subject and the site that's what I understood and I've got a I've got something here that I copied from uh, now you're the attorney so we'll you know we'll listen to you obviously but there's something called a, a, a freedom of information advisory council and they put out a number of advisory opinions and I've got two of them here, and they seem to be pretty clear in, in my reading of them. And, and you'll see it as I have opinion also from the advisory council that when, it, when it's personnel, you do not have to specifically state the personnel. Co correct. Okay. I, there's no, there's no, no argument there. So in, in this case, we have a site. Right. We have the um, purpose. Right. And uh, I have clarified the motion to discuss the specific items. You, which is, which is you. Yes. And, but I, I hear there's another there's one. There's another one, but that it does not have to be. Doesn't have to be named. It person. No, I understand that, but a specific employee. We would put some word. A specific employee. Yes. Employee. Yes, exactly. And I think I said that. No. <laughs> okay. We definitely have are we, are we, Do we have to redraft this, or just our. Do you have the, the minutes? The motion is sufficient if it includes those items. It doesn't have to be. Right. Okay, do we know all the items that we need to include? Kathy? Yeah. We do. Okay. I have three, I have three issues and um, possibly the fourth. Well, four issues basically. You have four three, issues. Three, two of the same. That's correct. Personnel issue. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, 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 I'm, I'm not used to your procedure process, so I'll work it through next time. Well, we're not saying what we were doing was right, <laughs> I can promise. They change. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do what we've been doing in the past. <laughs> Okay, so back to the uh, uh, request to go in closed session. There was a motion and a second. Mr. Alger. Aye. Mr. Liver. Mr. Serby. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Deller. Aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Okay, is there a motion to reconvene an open session? So moved. Second. 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 Mr. Alger? Aye. Mr. Liburn? Aye. Mr. Serby? Aye. Mr. Deller? Aye. Mr. Rogers? Aye. The chair votes aye. Would each of you individually certify that only those matters as were identified in the motion to go into closed meeting were discussed or considered? Mr. Alger? I so certify. Mr. Liburn? I so certify. Mr. Serby? I so certify. Mr. Deller? I so certify. Mr. Rogers? I so certify. And the chairman certifies. Thank you. With that, I'd like to recognize Mr. Jim Cornwell, yes. our attorney for the town of Colonial Beach. Gentlemen, as you know, in September, you adopted a resolution to sell a parcel of property known as the Eleanor Mobile Home Park property uh, to uh, two purchasers who are leaving uh, residents of Florida. Um, since that time, uh, the 
purchasers have uh, expressed a desire not to go forward on the transaction. And also the town has been sued concerning um, an attempt to stop the uh, sale. Uh, frankly, since the purchasers are, are, are not desirous of going forward on the transaction, and because of the pending litigation, I recommend that uh, council withdraw and rescind that resolution and authorize me to prepare a um, settlement document where make both the town and the respective purchasers simply agree to, to walk away with, with no liability on anybody um, and uh, the may I be authorized to sign that agreement once it's prepared. Okay. So do we do we have that resolution number no, we to rescind? Don't. This is an oral oral request for an oral motion. Okay. Oral motion. Okay. So there's a motion to rescind the um, purchase of Eleanor Park. So we'll in second. 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 Mr. Alger. Aye. Mr. Lyburn. Aye. Mr. Serby. Aye. Mr. Deller. Aye. Mr. Rogers. Aye. And Chair votes aye. I will prepare. I will talk to both the prospective purchasers and the attorneys for the litigants and see if I can get this done before the end of the week. Okay. Thank you very much. There's a motion. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Lyburn. Aye. Mr. Serby. Aye. Mr. Deller. Aye. Mr. Rogers. Aye. And Chair votes aye. Thank you very much.